for these are two circles overlapping themselves this area of intercept is going to be your lens whereas this part since you'll be using the pencil you just simply wipe off this region the straight line that cuts from the center of this circle through to the center of this other circle is called your principal axis from this midpoint to halfway becomes the principal focus here becomes 2f just as here is also 2f here is the principal focus here is the optical center C why because it is center of this optical medium that's what's called the optical center through so from the optical center you could just draw a straight line so you would um, understand what I'm talking about just draw a straight line through that cuts through the center of the lens all right so this midpoint here and this cross at the junction here is called the optical center this lens is called a, a convex lens now this one if you take a look at this too you see that this straight line is also principal axis the midpoint here is called the optical center so this shaded region is now the lens if we decide to draw a line that cuts through to the midpoint here it becomes the optical center just as we had in this case so if we spell it out C is the optical center and F is the principal focus this lens a concave lens so now to the ray diagram For the sake of this diagram, I've decided to use the value for the these horizontal lines, which we call the principal axis. Each of these lines are 10 cm, which means the principal focus should be 2.5 in this part, which I've marked out. Here's F, F, F. Here's your optical center, and here is 2F. So for this convex lens, which we're considering first there are two rules just uh, as in the mirror right? the first rule says that the ray parallel to the principal axis will refract and pass through F but if it's coming through F then it will refract and be parallel to the principal axis the second rule says if a ray pass through C it would go unrefracted or it will pass through without bending so let's assume we're going to use the same one centimeter for our object all through the diagram so let's proceed let's consider a case where the object is beyond 2f from the first rule it will be parallel to the principal axis and it will pass through f The second rule says the second ray is going to come from the top of the object through C and there we go. So the nature of the image formed when the object is beyond 2F is 1. The image will be inverted. Secondly, it will be diminished. And thirdly, it's going to be real. Let's go to the second one. When the object is at 2F, it's going to be first rule says parallel to the principal axis then cuts through f second rule says it's going to pass from the top to the optical center and down here so the nature of the image formed when the object is placed at 2f is one the image should be inverted secondly it's going to be real and third it's going to be the same size as the object let's go to the next one when the object is between 2f and f let's follow the rule again at this point of intercept 
is where the image is informed. So the nature of the image formed when the object is between 2, F and F is that the image is inverted, 2 it's real and thirdly it is magnified way bigger than the object. So let's go to the fourth one. Now the object is at F. Can you draw the ray diagram for this? Please do pause the video and try it out. Then when you're done, you hit the play button and see if you're correct. So let's check what you've done. What we'll do together now. The first rule says the ray parallel to the principal axis will be refracted and will pass through F. The second rule says the ray that will pass through C will be unrefracted. So it's just going to go through straight down. So the nature of the image formed when the object is at F is infinity. So let's move to the next one. So let's try this again. You could pause the video and do it on your own. Right. So let's go on. this point of intercept so the nature of the image formed would be magnified virtual upright how about this case so what happens when the object is at infinity so this time around we're going to reverse the case rays that pass through F become parallel to the principal axis and while that which passes through C will pass through or refracted. So when the object is at infinity, the image will be at F and the nature of the image would be 1. It's going to be inverted, it's going to be real and it's going to be diminished. Now, for this last one, this is going to be our concave lens. So at any point when you place the object, it's going to give you just about the same image all the time. So for the concave lens, the ray parallel to the principal axis will refract diverging. In all this case, the ray has a refracting and converging towards F. But this ray will refract and be diverging. So let's proceed. So the nature of the image formed when the object is at any point in front of the lens is one. The image should be erect, it's going to be virtual, and it's going to be diminished. Remember that the length we used all through was 10 centimeters and uh, object height was one centimeter at the thickness of our lens to be one centimeter as well so 0 0.5 on either side of um, the lens you could use any value depending on the instructions given to you by the examiner so let's just complete it okay okay that's one done so that's a convex lens so let's do this see the way we draw a concave lens and see our convexes. Two formulas we need to solve general problem on the lens. The first is 1 over F equals 1 over U plus 1 over V. While the second is M equals V over U. And the last case, you don't need to bother yourself about realist positive or the new Cartesian. 
because they are both the same thing. The real is positive and the real is on the right hand side of the graph. You don't need to start thinking which of them is negative and positive. All virtual images will give you negative and all real image will give you a positive. Please do practice. I wish you the best in your exams. Thanks for watching.